Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Scrap Scene Locals of Britain episode. For each episode, we will cover a locomotive that did not make it into preservation. All these locomotives will be standard gauge and be owned by a pre grouping railway company, one of the big four railway companies, and or British Railways. While some members will get new bills to their class, most of these will be scrapped and likely remain scrapped. Here we go. Our next episode is on the Furnace Railway D5060s. Now before I begin, I would like to say that I couldn't really find much info on this class. So I'm going to uh, make as much, squeeze as much info as I have gained and as I can here. Are you ready? The Furnace Railway was a small railway company that made most of its income from iron ore traffic around Barrow and Furness. During the 1880s and early 1890s, these duties were being handled by O4Os and O6Os, most of which dated back from the 1860s and were due for replacement. However, in 1899, the locomotive superintendent of the Furnace Railway, William Pettigrew, designed an O60 tender engine to replace these old locomotives. This class was known as the D3s. The D3s had a 150 psi boiler, 4 foot 7.5 inch driving wheels, and 18 by 26 inch inside cylinders, which gave it 17,864 pounds of tractive effort. There were 12 members of the class. These were split evenly in two batches between Nazmuth, Wilson and Company and Sharp Stewart in Glasgow, and all were numbered 7 through 18. The class was also fitted with vacuum brakes and steam heating for excursions, particularly in the summer. In 1907, Pettigrew introduced the D4s. There were four members of this class, numbered 3 to 6, and all were built by North British, a locomotive company, successor to Sharp Stewart. The D4s had the same cylinders, braking system, and steam heating system as the D3s, but with larger driving wheels at 5 foot 1 inches and a higher boiler pressure at 160 psi, resulting in 17,337 pounds of tractive effort. Intended for both excursions and iron ore traffic, the D4s were seldom used for excursions. Although their larger driving wheels gave a greater turn of speed, the D4s were still roughly in the same league as the D3s, only having 527 less pounds of tractive effort than their predecessors. This essentially made the class a stopgap. In 1913, Pettigrew introduced a more powerful mineral hauler for the railway. This was based on his D3 and D4 classes. The D5s, as they became known, had the same 18 by 26 inch inside cylinders and 4 foot 7 and a half inch driving wheels as the D3s, but an increased boiler pressure at 170 psi and a tractive effort of 21,935 pounds. Like the D3s and D4s, the D5s were fitted with vacuum brakes and steam heating for use on holiday excursions during the busy summer periods, but were mainly used for iron ore traffic. The first four were built by North British Locomotive Company in 1913 with Phoenix superheaters. The superheater arrangement was also fitted to two K2 440s. This resulted in both classes having a smoke box that jutted forward making them look a bit awkward. The experiments were unsuccessful, and the K2s and D5s were rebuilt without these superheaters, and instead received normal extended smoke boxes. The following year, the following year, the same year, Furnace Railway received two more members from the North British Locomotive Company, 
number 27 and 28. To continue from the four prototypes, which were numbered 1, 2, 25, and 26, production was stopped during World War I. By the end of the war, though, eight more members had been introduced, numbered 19 to 22, and were split evenly between Kitson Company of Leeds and North British Locomotive Company, again in two batches. A final batch of five was built by the North British Locomotive Company in 1920, number 31 to 35. All 19 members made it into LMS days, being renumbered for 12494 to 12512 and classified as 3F. In 1926, four members were rebuilt with Lancashire and Yorkshire style boilers, which was a similar arrangement made to the 28 class 08, uh, 060s and the class 6 242 tanks. The only difference between these two was the fact that the, the D5s had saturated boilers rather than superheating. The arrangement was so successful that in 1928, three of the D4 and two of the D3s were rebuilt with this arrangement. However, by, however, the D3s and D4s were already life expired by 1932 and were eventually made extinct by 1936. The first of the D5s to go was number 12505 in May 1930. Because of their non standard boilers, those not rebuilt with the Lancashire and Yorkshire boilers and cabs were the first to go. The youngest of these locomotives was only 12 years old. Seven more were withdrawn in 1932, and the last two of the D5s were withdrawn by the LMS in 1935. The remaining six were used on secondary duties and were popular for rail tours. They all survived into British Railways days, with two of them being of the original boiler design, and the remaining four being the, uh, all four of the Lancashire and Yorkshire rebuilt, uh, style boiler rebuilds, as well as their cabs. Fortunately, they didn't last very long, as the first withdrawal was number 52508 from Workington in September 1950. The other five lasted until 1956, when number 52594 and 52509 were withdrawn and from Barrow that year. The next two members to go were number 52499 from Workington in February 1957 and 52501 that June from Carnforth. The last member to go was number 52510 from Carnforth that August. Not only was number 52510 the last Lancashire, last furnace railway engine to be withdrawn, but she and number 52501 also outlasted the 28 class by five months. I hope you enjoyed this video, and just like the last episode, this series is inspired by Locomotives of Great Britain by Rail, Air, Land, and Sea. I'll link to his channel in the description below. Be sure to tune in next time next week when we discuss something from the Great Western Railway. Ooh, I can already tell Western enthusiasts are going to be very excited about this. 
And as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment in the box below. And I shall see you next week. Goodbye.